On August 3, 1980, a landowner in northern Snohomish County, Washington, discovered human skeletal remains while walking on his property at a bend in Pilchuck Creek. This area was located in the 2500 block of Standwood Bryant Road of Arlington, Washington. The Snohomish County Sheriff's Office responded to the scene along with the deputy coroner and what they found was a skull with a gunshot wound to the back of it. Other remains were also found the next afternoon during a second search. However, no clothing, jewelry, or any other items that could have been used to aid in identification of the remains were located. It was determined that the remains belonged to a white male, possibly mixed race with Native American ancestry, approximately 23 to 28 years of age, and had exceptional dental work. A dental exam was performed to enable a search of dental records for missing persons, but there were no matches found. A clay reconstruction of the victim's face was developed by the late Dr. Michael Jarney and released to the public by the end of 1980, but it yielded no clues as to who the John Doe was. Dr. Charney returned the remains to the coroner's office the following spring, and they were buried in the Arlington Municipal Cemetery on May 26, 1981. While it was common practice at the time to bury unidentified remains, skeletal remains that are discovered today are kept at the medical examiner's office until they are identified. Unable to determine his identity, he became known to the local authorities as John Doe No. 3 or the Stanwood Bryant Doe. In 2008, cold case detective Jim Scharf and retired Snohomish County Superior Court Judge Ken Kalsert began examining old unsolved homicide cases in their county. With advances in technology, the team was interested in revisiting this case to see if there was suitable DNA evidence for additional testing. The case was entered into NamUs and NCIC databases. In 2011, Detective Scharf was given permission to exhume the remains to obtain a DNA sample in hopes of obtaining the person's identity. In 2016, forensic artist Natalie Murray examined the skull and mandible, and that spring provided the medical examiner's office with a facial reconstruction sketch, which was released to the media in hopes of generating new leads. Two years later, in July 2018, multiple bones were sent to DNA Solutions for microarray DNA testing, which is a way for laboratories to detect the expression of thousands of genes at the same time. They were able to obtain very small amounts of degraded DNA from several bones, but not enough for a genealogical profile. In mid-2020, a bone sample was sent to Bode Technology and they were able to obtain a partial DNA profile that they provided to the Baltimore Crime Lab to be uploaded to CODIS. Soon after, the Sheriff's Office obtained funding from the FBI to contract Othram to attempt to obtain usable DNA from the remains. On November 16, 2021, genetic genealogists at Othram were able to provide the medical examiner's office with the name of a possible match, Ronald David Chambers. Ronald's sister was contacted and provided a DNA sample for comparison. On December 29, 2021, the relationship was confirmed by Family Tree DNA and the remains were officially identified as Ronald David Chambers. In February 2022, dental charting obtained from Ronald's military records was reviewed by Dr. Gary Bell, who also confirmed the identity. Ronald, a 28-year-old Vietnam vet from Rome, Georgia, and his wife Mary, an infant son, were staying near friends for a couple weeks in SeaTac, Washington. Their car had broken down, and after going to dinner on Friday night with their friends, they stayed the weekend at a motel next to their friend's home. On Sunday, December 17, 1978, Ronald left their motel in SeaTac in a rental car with his friend Robert Helberg to help Robert move from Arizona. When he left at 10.30 a.m., he told his wife that if he wasn't back by noon, to rent the room another night. This was the last time she ever saw her husband. Robert returned at 3 a.m. the next morning in Ronald's rental car. He told Ronald's wife that Ronald wasn't with him and was probably killed in a contract hit. He said they were probably after him but got Ronald instead. When she asked Robert if he had anything to do with her husband's disappearance, he clenched his jaw and said no without giving any further details. 
She later reported her husband missing after flying home to Rome, Georgia without him. While foul play was suspected at the time and the suspect was identified, without a body, it could not be proven. His body wasn't found until a year and a half after he went missing, 60 miles north of SeaTac. Unfortunately, Robert died in prison in 1993 and is the suspect in multiple homicide cases stemming from 1978 to 1985. Thankfully, Ronald's family finally has some type of closure and Ronald finally got his name back after 43 long years. In August 2003, skeletal remains were found near the intersection of Highway 47 and County Road 5 in Bradford Township, Minnesota. The remains were discovered three feet below the surface during an excavation project by the landowner. It was believed that the body had been there anywhere from 3 to 28 years. It was later determined to be those of a white male between 20 and 28 years of age. A DNA profile and dental records were entered into missing person databases. A facial reconstruction was also created to try and generate clues to the man's identity. Over the next several years, multiple people came forward wondering if it could be their loved one, but one by one, DNA ruled them all out. Unable to determine his identity, he became known as Isante County John Doe 2003. In 2019, Chief Deputy Lisa Lovering started the process of using updated DNA technology to try to identify the remains. The DNA was submitted to a lab several times, but the DNA sample just wasn't able to be further tested after a certain point. In 2021, Chief Lovering learned of Othram, which uses a newer technology. Othram was able to develop a new viable DNA extract and then build a comprehensive DNA profile. The profile was then sent to a genetic genealogist and within 24 hours, they had a match of a distant relative. Based off the family tree, she was able to locate two siblings and a phone number. Leads were passed to the investigators and they contacted the possible sibling. His family was shocked to receive a phone call about their brother that they hadn't seen in 51 years. A family member confirmed that he had been missing since 1970 and his name was Donald Rendall and that the FBI had been looking for him prior to his disappearance due to involvement with drugs. He told his family he was leaving his home in New Brighton, Minnesota in the summer of 1970 and was heading to California. This is the last time they heard from him. Donald's siblings provided their DNA, which were then compared to those of the John Doe. It was then confirmed the remains indeed belonged to Donald Rendall. Donald attended high school in the Twin Cities area and was living with a roommate at the time he allegedly said he was leaving for California. He was never reported as missing as it was very uncommon to report an adult missing in the 70s. Investigators said the official cause of death for Rendall is listed as undetermined, but they believe he was a victim of homicide and his body was buried. Whether he made it to California and came back or was killed before he left the state is unknown. It is believed that Donald was buried in Isani County in late 1970 to early 1971 at the age of 22. It is further believed that there may still be people alive today who know what happened to him in 1970. Authorities and his family hope the identification will jar someone's memory or weigh on the conscience of someone that knows what happened to Donald. On January 19, 1988, a hunter found what he thought to be human skeletal remains in Conroe, Texas, 200 miles south of Dallas. At first, he thought they were probably animal bones and left them alone. However, he returned, collected the skeletal remains, and brought them to a dentist for analysis. Initially, the remains were identified as belonging to a female, but was later determined to be those of an older male. Once the remains were identified as human, the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office was contacted to investigate. Returning to the location where the skeletal remains were initially found, investigators were able to locate other bones as well as a pair of pants and a shoe. Although a cause of death could not be determined, it was believed that the remains had been there approximately four years. 
Over 20 years later, in 2009, DNA was extracted from the remains and a DNA profile was developed. The profile was entered into CODIS, but sadly, no matches were found. With all leads exhausted, the case went cold. In September 2021, the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office contacted Othram to use advanced DNA testing to produce new leads. The DNA profile was entered into genealogy databases. Genealogist Carla Davis was able to use the profile produced to match to potential family members. This ultimately led to the John Doe being identified as Charles Wayne Dodd. Charles was born May 17, 1911 and went by Charlie. He was last seen at the age of 74 on August 1, 1985 in his hometown of Dallas, Texas and reported missing three years before his remains were found. Authorities believe he may have been taken against his will, but will continue the investigation to try and determine what events led to his untimely demise. On January 27, 1993, partial human remains were located near the town of Ina, Illinois, on the side of a wooded roadway in the Wayne Fitzgerald State Park. It was determined that she was a homicide victim between the ages of 30 and 50 years old. It was also determined that she suffered from torticollis or right neck syndrome, a condition that may have caused her head to have a sideways tilt. When Charles Holt created the illustration of her, he made sure this condition was very noticeable. However, unbeknownst to him, the victim's right neck syndrome was much less noticeable and much less severe than originally thought. Unable to determine her identity, she became known as Ina Jane Doe 1993. In February 2021, Dr. Amy Michael, the Assistant Professor of Anthropology at the University of New Hampshire, offered to re-examine the case using updated forensic methods. It was then that it was determined that the woman's condition was way less severe. Following Dr. Michael's reanalysis, a new forensic image was created by artist Carl Koppelman. Meanwhile, samples of her remains were sent to the lab at Astria Forensics to create a DNA profile suitable for use in forensic genetic genealogy. A DNA profile was provided to Red Grave Research Forensic Services, who then uploaded the data file to GEDmatch on February 3, 2022. Red Grave's genealogy team found a potential match, Susan Lund, within a day of beginning to research the DNA matches. The potential ID was passed to law enforcement, who then followed up with family members of hers. A sibling of Susan's offered her DNA for comparison, and on March 6, 2022, 29 years later, it was confirmed that the identity of Ina Jane Doe was in fact Susan Lund. Susan was born November 29, 1967, and lived in Clarksville, Tennessee. She was last seen by her family on Christmas Eve of 1992 when she reportedly left home to walk to a nearby grocery store. When she didn't return to her home on Harrier Court off Jack Miller Boulevard in Clarksville, her husband Paul Lund reported her missing. After a few weeks of authorities searching, they decided to close the missing person's case, stating that they believed she had left on her own accord and was alive and well in Hopkinsville, Kentucky, where someone reported they had seen her. But her family did not stop looking for her. Her children sadly grew up, believing that their mother had abandoned them. She had three children under the age of six and was pregnant with her fourth child at the time. It's unclear how she ended up in Illinois. Her husband is not a suspect, and he sadly passed away in 2020 without knowing his wife didn't abandon her family. As of today, the murder side of this investigation remains unsolved. On April 3, 1981, a farmer in Bethlehem, New York, went out to his fields during the spring thaw to fix a fence damaged in a winter storm. Near his stables, he would discover the deceased body of an unknown male. The remains were located in a wooded area at the property line between the Vadney Farm and the Elm Avenue Town Park in Bethlehem. Due to advanced decomposition, no cause of death could be determined. It was, however, determined that he was a white male between the ages of 30 to 60 years old. 
He was about 200 pounds and was wearing Hager slacks, white jockey shorts, and a brand new belt with a $10 price tag on it and a Van Heusen shirt, as well as an extra large olive colored jacket with a zip front and hood fur lining and brown moccasin type shoes with little thread. Also found was ripped up pieces of paper with phone numbers for various places, including local churches and stores, a partial bus ticket, and local newspapers from January 1, 1981, three months before he was found. There was no identification on his person, and authorities were unable to determine his identity, and he became known as Bethlehem John Doe, but with no further information, the case went cold. At some point, authorities accidentally misplaced the man's skull and mandible, and the case records were lost during a flood in the early 1990s. In 2013, when they reopened the case, Bethlehem Police Commander Adam Hornick meticulously started rebuilding the file from two sheets of paper. They eventually rediscovered his remains in a Boston Lake dentist office in Saratoga County. The previous dentist at this location had been involved in working to identify the decedent back in 1981. These bones were then submitted to several labs to try to develop a DNA profile. Once a DNA profile was developed, it was uploaded into all state and national databases. In 2020, the Bethlehem Police Department partnered with the FBI Investigative Genetic Genealogy Unit, who partnered up with Othram to develop a genealogical profile. After building the profile, Otham returned it to FBI investigators who performed a genealogical search. From there, FBI agents were able to identify two potential family members to the unknown man, an elderly aunt and paternal first cousin. Bethlehem PD investigators contacted the potential relatives about the case, who then submitted their own DNA for comparison to the John Doe's DNA. This comparison confirmed the familial relationship and confirmed the unknown man's identity. On January 13, 2022, police announced the John Doe's identity as Franklin D. Feldman. Franklin was originally from Massachusetts, but had been living in New York for several years prior to his death at the age of 41. However, he was never reported missing. There were no signs of foul play, and law enforcement doesn't believe his cause of death will ever be known for certain. It is speculated that he may have been a transient and fell into the stables and was either injured by the fall or by horses' hooves. There is very little known about Franklin, and no pictures are available at this time. As a reminder, you can go to dnasolves.com and help fund the lab cost to help with identifying the many remaining Jane and John Doe's. It costs $5,000 to fully fund a case, and many are close to reaching their goal of $5,000.